Well, the spookiest of holidays is indeed almost upon us. It's fun to think of the tricks and treats that are in store, especially in my house here. Some sweet stats to show the profitability associated with Halloween and horror as well. Consumers are not shy when it comes to opening their wallets. $10.14 billion are going to be spent on Halloween-related items this year. That's about $103 per person, according to the National Retail Federation. Not only is that an all-time high, but a major boost from last year's paltry $8 billion. So to break it down some more, $3.3 billion on costumes, $3 billion on candy, Hershey, Mars, Mondelez will be watching those numbers, of course, and benefiting from them. And $3.2 billion on decoration, some of them are outside my house, $700 million on greeting cards as well. Theme parks across the country are offering over-the-top spooktacular events. Six Flags holds Fright Fest at their theme parks. An annual tradition since 1986, Disney World has Mickey's Not-So-Scary Halloween Party. Whew with major events going on around the Haunted Mansion as well. And also Comcast Universal Studios runs the largest bash with Halloween Horror Nights. Despite licensing Netflix and Warner Brothers characters, Universal is also investing in horror films. The Michael Myers film Halloween Kills is out in theaters. It was out just ahead of this holiday. Reviews have been mixed, but it did bring in $50.3 million in its opening weekend. Studios have really been cashing in on horror recently. The top five highest grossing horror movies of the past five years have raked in a combined $2.2 billion. And there's also a streaming service that focuses exclusively on horror content. It's called Shudder. It's a division of AMC Networks. And last year, the platform surpassed a million subscribers. Joining us now is the general manager of Shudder, Craig Engler. Craig, Thank you for being here. Obviously, this is a big time of year for you. Do you guys see a bump in subscribers ahead of Halloween as people are sort of, they've got their minds on this kind of content? Yeah, absolutely. In fact, we uh, have what we call a Halloween season, which really starts August 1st and runs through October 31st. And we program Shudder with what we call the 61 days of Halloween. Other people do 31 days. We expanded it to 61 days because we see demand for horror content really kind of start to bubble up in August, September, and then it hits a peak in October. What makes a good scary movie right now? You know, horror has a lot of different genres, right? There's scary, there's slow burn, you know, there's, uh, you know, like J horror, which is Japanese horror, there's folk horror. I think people though always love a great scary movie and what people kind of realize is just jump scares in a movie, just like something popping out at you at an unknown you know, time, isn't really enough anymore. You have to have characters, you have to have set up, you have to have a whole reason for being scared. So if you're invested in a character and something scary happens to them, you yourself become a lot more scared. So scares are really kind of dependent on how invested you are in the characters of a movie or a TV show. And it does feel like, Craig, that we are in, um, over the past, call it five years, there's been a, a new wave and a renaissance of the horror genre, particularly as social commentary with movies like Get Out, right? So do you think that that has brought renewed interest into the genre? And, and what are some other themes that you're seeing being explored that people are interested in or that you're excited about? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, horror has gone through ups and downs over the years, right? In early Hollywood, in like the 20s and 30s, Dracula, Frankenstein, Wolf, Frankenstein, Wolfman were the biggest movies out there, right? And then, you know, in sort of the 70s, you had this like literary horror, you know, The Exorcist, The Omen, those were the biggest movies of the time. And then we ran into a little bit of a funk in the 80s where so many low budget slashers were produced to capitalize on the success of things like Friday the 13th and Halloween, that the genre got into a little bit of a rut. And I think in the last five years, people have kind of rediscovered how popular the genre is and how different it is. You know, if you look at the biggest horror movies of all time, right? Jaws is a horror movie. Alien is a horror movie. Silence of the Lambs is a horror movie. Totally different types of horror that people really gravitate towards. And I think horror has always explored sort of social issues. Horror reflects what's going on in our lives. You know, when the, when the pandemic hit and people were first in lockdown, the number one request we got was to add more movies about pandemics, which is, you know, counterintuitive. You think, oh, nobody wants to live through a, a pandemic, but pandemics really are, um, Horror movies really help you kind of experience the sort of scariness of something, but then come back into a relatively safe reality. You know, I think right now we're seeing a lot of uh, mov uh, movies and series that are kind of tackling social issues. We just launched a new movie yesterday called Horror Noir. 
which is based on a documentary we did a couple years ago, which explores the history of Black horror. So we have six stories told by Black creators and created by Black filmmakers and horror noir, and that very much represents what people are talking about and what people want to talk about and what experience they're going through. Is there an undervalued horror movie I need to be watching this weekend? You know, on Shudder, I will sing the praises of this movie because you will watch this movie. In the first half of the movie, you'll think, why has Craig recommended this movie to me? It's, it's just an okay movie. And then the second half of the movie, you'll, you'll say, wow, I never thought a movie could possibly do this, let alone a horror movie. It's called One Cut of the Dead. It was a Japanese horror movie. It was produced for, I think, under $30,000 and grossed like $30 million in Japan. It's on Shudder, and I will say it is a, the most wonderful movie. You, nobody ends up at the end of this movie without a big smile and possibly tears of joy on their face. And it's 100% fresh. It's rated 100% fresh on Rotten Tomatoes. The biggest problem we have is getting people to find it because it has subtitles, and people tend not to like to watch things with subtitles as much as things that aren't subtitled. But I would say watch One Cut of the Dead. It's a fun, fantastic, wonderful horror movie. And people don't usually say that about horror movies. One cut of the dead, and you. I don't usually think of you as as someone ending a watching a horror movie with um smile and and tears of joy on I their know, face. Right? So I'm, it, it's, it's I'm a intrigued. Although, horror movie. yeah, although full full disclosure, I am not a horror fan myself. I'm not a fan of watching. I am a fan of reading horror. For some, I don't mm -hmm. know. Go figure. Maybe I need to give it another shot. Craig Engler, thanks like for being here. Happy Halloween, Shutter General Manager, talking to us about the horror genre and the demand for horror films right now.